welcome to Taking Stock. This is your uh, weekend dose of uh, all the triggers that are lined up in the week to come and of course how the week gone by has shaped up. Uh, last week has been a disastrous week for the markets. Not so much the entire week but more importantly the kind of carnage that we saw on Friday was something that no one on the street was anticipating. But we have guests uh, who join us on the show to tell us how to approach the week to come. Anuj is also here. Hi Anuj. Um, you know the, the capital controls that we saw from the Reserve Bank spooked the market entirely it did nothing to help the currency and then we saw that big disaster on Friday yes Sonia indeed and you know you said uh, we have a dose of you know first, first I thought you were talking about a dose of medicine for the bulls because <laughs> they would need that after the kind of Friday that they had but uh, really I mean despite all the clarifications and all you know this market was structurally weak and uh, uh, you know you you may find excuses but the fact is with the benefit of hindsight of course uh, the rally till Wednesday was a success rally and Friday actually showed us what we are right now in terms of global context where we stand and the Nifty closed at 5500. So it's a vicious bear market and it's going on. Clearly the capital restrictions that the, uh, the Reserve Bank has come out with could adversely impact the uh, uh, sentiment of FIs and that was the big story of last week. But in case you missed out on all the action last week, here it is. Uh, the Nifty collapsed on Friday with a 4% cut on Reserve Bank's capital control fears and global weakness. Stocks like BHEL, Bank of Baroda, Axis Bank, PNB were all down about 5-10% to last week. And the Reserve Bank imposed partial capital curbs on companies and individuals to stabilize the rupee. The rupee, however, fell to an all-time low of 62.03 to the dollar as the RBI measures failed to prop up the currency. And of course, in individual stocks, MCX and financial technologies lose about 15-17% to 17 last week after brokers and investors threatened to take NSCL to court over lack of settlement dues. Well, let's also get to our guest then. Uh, we have uh, S. Naren of ICICI Prudential AMC, Amrish Baliga from Edelweiss and Sushil Kiria from CIMB who now join in. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me and joining us. I rather, uh, uh, Sushil, let me start with you because uh, on Friday the market broke uh, uh, big technical marks and actually the 5500 also came into the picture. What's your call now going into the next week? Uh, first of all, what do you think was really taking place? And secondly, how would you approach the market now? See, there are many different things the market is doing uh, across within its internals and across different time frames. If our focus is currently to talk about next one week, see, uh, more than 4% fall in a single day ever since Nifty Futures started trading has happened on 108 days out of say about 3,309 days. That's a less than 2% chance of such a behavior. Now, this can also be interpreted another way around that what market did today and for which there is so much of pain getting expressed all over is not the first time market has done this. It has done the same kind of behavior over a set of another 100 days in the last 10 or 15 years. So nothing so exceptional except that it comes less regularly and on the back of a market that had been witnessing carnage for last six months across a large sector of stocks across you know stocks that are far away from the nifty and within the nifty say except for five or seven stocks uh, if you take the top performing five stock stocks out nifty is already equivalent of 5100 so we have witnessed this kind of a large fall that has not been seen in the recent past in the last six months we haven't had a minus four percent day so we are very painful feeling very painful today and in terms of technical levels, there are many ways in which technicals play out. And uh, maybe we'll come back to discuss this in greater length. But say if you take a next one month view, the range for me until 5400 is broken stretches all the way from 5400 to 5900. And within which if there is only 100 points left. So for somebody who's holding no position right now for Monday morning, should he go and short sell? The answer is no, he should sit on the sidelines and wait. Naren, uh, uh, what about you? Uh, in terms of uh, fundamentals, uh, uh, what do you think is really going wrong? I mean, uh, is there some FI selling which is coming back? Uh, uh, what exactly is hurting the market uh, and how would you approach it going forward? Yeah, actually, uh, since the steps are uh, taken by the RBI in July, uh, the behavior of the fixed income market has been uh, pretty surprising to us. We have seen a fairly large jump in yields across time periods and uh, we have seen a fair amount of, uh, what shall I say, I mean, uh, 
I would call the, I mean, I would say a fair amount of outflows from the fixed income market. See, the steps taken by the Reserve Bank of India and the government at this point of time does reduce the growth for the current year pretty significantly. And, uh, you know, that impact has now played out in the equity market. Although the worry seems to be more to do with the fact that there were steps taken uh, in the recent past to try to reduce capital outflows. And I think mistakenly it has been interpreted that there can be even more steps to cut capital outflows. I don't believe such steps will be taken by the government. Uh, and uh, that was possibly the reason for today's fall. Uh, having said that, I think uh, we have to brace ourselves for low growth this year, which is definitely negative for equity markets. Although it is not negative for fixed income markets, it is being perceived as being negative for fixed income markets as well. Okay, Amrish Baliga Fidelwise is also with us. Uh, Amrish, hi, welcome to the show. Um, you know, the big debate in the market last week was whether 5500 will break conclusively or not. I know this could be anybody's best guess, but in your mind, um, we have been bouncing back repeatedly from this level. Do you think we'll manage to hold it again? Uh, in fact, uh, there is a lot of uh, skepticism in the market. Uh, people have in fact lost across uh, various asset classes, so the trust levels are extremely low. And the sort of uh, 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 ad hoc measures uh, which the government has taken in this crisis-like situation to address a problem uh, isn't really uh, like addressing that problem but creating new problems. Uh, in fact, uh, whatever came in the last two days uh, to help address the fallen rupee hasn't really helped. Uh, whereas it has increased the uh, uh, skepticism among the FIIs that possibly there could be exchange controls going ahead. And because of which uh, we have seen some amount of selling from there. In addition to that, uh, we saw uh, like a lot of short sellers also getting on the bandwagon and going short in the market. Because of which uh, we saw the sort of a correction. Uh, I mean, of uh, nearly uh, like uh, uh, 800 points on the uh, Sensex. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I mean, what I feel as far as Nifty is concerned that uh, possibly we should see some support at these levels. In case we don't break these levels, uh, we could see a decent bounce back, uh, possibly because of uh, like uh, short covering and uh, could see levels of closer to about 5600, 5650. But in case we break these levels decisively on Monday, then I suppose it opens up the next uh, set of uh, possibly a band of another 300, 400 points more. Mm. So, Shail, um, you were mentioning this level of 5400 that's important to watch, but um, as a trader, how do you approach the next week? Is there any trading strategy at all that you would advocate at this point, either on the short side or any contrarian call that you would want to give? Okay, any trading strategy that has to be uh, implemented afresh has to begin by first looking at where you are. If you are right now holding short, of course, you know, you had a killer of a day to your advantage, continue to hold that and your stop losses cannot be very nimble uh, given the very large range in a single day you know uh, a typical stop loss for a trader with a 4 5 day time frame or a 10 day time frame is maybe uh, less than a percent uh, uh, 3 fourths of a percent this will have to clearly go up to 2 percent now if there is a stop loss level that is at least 100 points away from here for a winner right now long entries cannot be entered into on the basis of evidence in any meaningful size until and unless there is a 100 point rebound so there are other ways if you are not holding any positions if you are holding long i mean of course you are sitting on a back trade and i would say wait for a couple of hours on monday to see see after the first two hours have passed by how is the market behaving i mean tv is too uh, restricted and medium for me to explain certain types of charts but i would say uh, on the basis of certain studies on monday i like to wait for a couple of hours there is a good chance uh, market may start making a final bottom for traders around then if it does not still hold and 5400 is also gone, I mean, then based on your recent profitability, you'll have to choose to be on the short side only. But as of now, over this weekend, I feel looking at a lot of things that uh, one should come back on Monday with a mindset to examine for the first two hours. And uh, uh, you increase and really go to full position size after 100 point rebound. But maybe if the first two hours market is not really falling, you start nibbling into longs. All right. So that's an advice. Maybe open with uh, to come to trade on Monday morning with a clean slate and an open mind and then take a call after one or two hours. Uh, Amrish, what about you? Uh, would you be advising any kind of buying going forward? 
I would recommend buying at this point of time uh, because uh, looking at the sort of a situation which is quite fluid and in case we see a further sell off by FIIs, I suppose, uh, I mean, these are names uh, which could get affected. I mean, although fundamentally speaking, uh, they could be great buys, but looking at the technical position in the market, I think it's still time to stay out for a while. I think it's best just to remain on cash uh, because you could get a lot of great opportunities going ahead in the next two or three months. So I suppose one should just hold on to cash. Okay, hold on to cash is the advice. Stay on guys, we have many more questions for you three but uh, we need to take a break. Before that, let's tell you about all the events that you should be keeping an eye out for in the coming week. There is the ongoing monsoon session of the parliament with only the company's bill passed by the Rajya Sabha, over 40 bills listed for the monsoon session. It will be interesting and important to see what progress will be made in the last week. Uh, all eyes are on the Congress's uh, flagship food security bill which Prime Minister Manmohan Singh called his most important business this session and in the global market space minutes of FOMC meet held on July 30th and 31st will be released on August 21 after the way the markets reacted to mere anticipation of any tapering by the US Fed this data will be closely watched out by global markets and in stock specific action watch out for United breweries as reports suggest that Heineken is looking to increase their stake in the Indian company so maybe there could be a some action over there but the big action really was what took place in the markets on Friday we got lots of important opinion on how to approach the markets as it has gotten back to that 5500 level so here out Mark Mobius of Templeton AMC and JP Morgan's Adrian Mowat with their thoughts on India and whether FIs have lost their patience we would not uh, exit out uh, maybe simply because there are some good companies that are good long-term holdings regardless of what happens uh, to the individual uh, uh, markets uh, so we feel that it's necessary to be in India but as I said we could put a lot more money in if uh, the government make the necessary reforms to allow uh, easier flows into the country the uh, concern is about the ability of the government to make the necessary reforms to uh, pull in foreign investments. Um, they unfortunately have not been moving fast enough to make reforms which will allow money to flow in. The stocks that we're in uh, have, have actually benefited from the currency depreciation. Um, but of course, there will be concern that, uh, you know, that if this continues, then uh, the other investments that we have uh, will be hurt uh, because we have both exposure to the domestic market, particularly to uh, the outsourcing market, which benefits from the weaker currency. So I think it's uh, it's up in the air right now, but definitely if this uh, con continues, uh, there will be further angst going forward. If the rupee can stabilize and maybe strengthen back towards the 60 level, uh, then we could see quite a sharp recovery rally in the Indian capital markets. I think the tactical approach um, is to switch from the exporters, which have outperformed substantially, and one of the best sectors in the whole of emerging markets has been Indian IT. Take a little bit of money out of that, still very good stories. And I would put some money into the private sector banks in India, which have been hit hard. Welcome back. You're watching Taking Stock, and we are in conversation with S. Narain, Sushil Kedia, and uh, also Amrish Paliga. Uh, uh, Narain, uh, what's your call on uh, IT space now? Because that's by far now the only last safe haven remaining apart from pharma. So, so what's your call now? Would IT and pharma continue to be the hiding space? Actually, what uh, what I find very difficult to understand is uh, right now, for example, there are a set of PSUs. Uh, those PSUs trade at single digit PE. Uh, they have cash equal to more than 50% of the market cap. And uh, the why they say, say uh, sell so cheap is because the market is very much worried that they'll do a divestment which will not be even at uh, 8 PE, it will be at 5 PE. So due to that, you know, instead, uh, if the government were to say, instead of doing divestment, let's do uh, this year uh, dividend increase, the whole market scenario will totally change and you will have market cap of companies aggregating something like 6 to 7 lakh crores, which can get re-rated overnight. 
So, you know, I uh, we have been hiding in this set of stocks because we find them exceptionally cheap because the market is totally worried about further disinvestment at big discounts to today's prices. So, the government were to clarify that and say we will not, we will actually uh, this year instead of doing this investment, we will collect money as dividends from all these cash rich companies. There will be a total change in sentiment overnight. And uh, as far as these tech and pharma names are concerned, while well, their outlook is very good for the near term, uh, but the point is they are not cheap stocks. Uh, they are not stocks where the price to earnings can double from here. I mean, uh, that's not the kind of valuation they are selling at at this point of time. Whereas the former set of PSUs of cash rich companies, their uh, price to earnings can go up at least from 7 to 14. Whereas uh, you have all these tech and pharma names which are trading at 20, They're, for their piece to go up to 40 won't be so easy. But how do you see this market play out now, Amrish? Uh, do you believe that this market is headed bil well below 5,500? I mean, there are some you know talks doing the rounds, numbers like 4,800, 4,900 on the Nifty that's being expected. Do you think we'll see those levels? Uh, it's quite early to talk about 4800 levels uh, at uh, this point of time, but then I would say that in case we break this 5800 levels decisively, then I suppose the next level to be washed out for would be about 5200. Okay, Amrish, uh, I wanted to ask you about the banks because, you know, uh, although many of these banks are at mouth-watering valuations, we see no takers for them at all. A classic example was what took place on Friday when there was a huge carnage in the banking space. And, uh, uh, you know, despite that, do you, do you uh, recommend any buying into the banking space at this point? Not right now. I would say that uh, the pain is still there in the banking space and looking at the way the economy is going, uh, clearly you will have uh, more NPS cropping up going ahead. And uh, because of that fear and also uh, you will have uh, basically the treasury income also is going to fall looking at the way uh, the bonds have been moving. Uh, so I suppose the next uh, two or three quarters could be tough for the banks and you will actually see most of them, especially the PSU space, I mean cracking further. So I think it is still time to wait and watch. So, Chil, I want to talk about banking. You know, uh, clearly, uh, it, so far the trade was bipolar. You, you sell the PSU banks and you buy the private sector banks up until at least two months back. Uh, over the last two months or so, we have seen cracks in private sector banking names. We have started seeing cracks in Access, ICICI, the HDFC twins. Uh, what's the call now going forward? Uh, is it a bit of buying opportunity that private sector bank banking names are presenting? or? Uh, it, the, the way to look at it is that maybe now they'll catch up with PSU banks in terms of the kind of fall that they had and one should stay away. Okay, Anuj, this question itself um, uh, has strong implications for the rest of the market also. The sector rotation and right now you are talking about rotation within the sector of banking. Uh, within these rotations, I think, you know, while the private banks have been laggards in this downtrend and there may be some more space on them on the lower side, uh, there are early signs of uh, a bottom building process within the PSU names and they are so deeply oversold. The same way that you know there was a total consensus on Tata Steel that its numbers are going to be so bad, everybody missed it, people have been tracking it fundamentally so closely and how you know how badly the entire street missed the number and there was a massive massive recoil back up. That kind of a possibility is building up clearly on all the PSU bank names and within the larger sector rotations for the market. You know, um, the the whole BSE metals index, the way it is looking like will roar up and next will be banks. And I think somewhere along this conversation, you were talking about if IT still remains to be the hiding space. Well, uh, so far it has not cracked, so there will be a lot of people hiding in there. But whether they will succeed in saving their capital, uh, it is doubtful because it is clearly a market where very severe sector rotation has been happening right since January to now on the large cap names and within which you know FMCG as you rightly said cracked out completely and now it is a turn of uh, uh, IT to really collapse and a larger picture which is important for all to look at is a favorite indicator of mine. When you divide the CNX 500 index price by the nifty index, I create what is called as a thrill index as in the smaller and the wider stocks are performing. For the last 7 months there has been a continuous slide in that and a number of technical indicators, momentum, divergence, the other things is clearly telling me that this flight into safety is now going to halt here. There is going to be a flight out of safety also. So the call to take is, is the wider market going to keep on collapsing and even these large cap NAMs will collapse also or there is very deep value 
already in a very wide variety of stocks and maybe out of the safety money will move out and for interim rallies to play out uh, you know i agree with ambrish's view that 4800 nifty is possible and even 4500 is possible but nothing is going to come in a straight line it's been like very elusive for the last 7 months since this top so uh, within sector rotations you know to get back to your question about the private banks well i'll not start buying in them now but we'll look closely at psu banks it is a sell pharma is going to be a sell going forward and maybe you know outside the index there are lots of stocks and it's time for you to you know perhaps pick up some stocks for playing a 3 months rebound <laughs> okay you've taken the word uh, technical very seriously sushil <laughs> all those numbers and dividing the indices etc but be that as it may you were making that point about uh, how um, some of these last bastions may start to crack as well let me pose that question to ambrish ambrish do you think that you know uh, the it the smcg space now it's the turn of these stocks to start moving or are these still places to hide Uh, in fact, I suppose the only place to hide right now is pharma and IT. But then, if the market cracks further, like uh, I said, in case we see levels of closer to uh, closer to about 5200 levels, uh, it is quite natural uh, that uh, these are the stocks uh, which could, uh, I mean, cracks. Uh, I mean, some of from here. Uh, in, uh, in fact, the crack may not be as much as the, uh, I mean, uh, what the market uh, would warrant. Uh, but still, you will see some crack. Sushil, so, uh, now let me come back to my uh, first question and my original question. Uh, uh, you know, to which you said that uh, you'll come back uh, on Monday morning, maybe spend two hours and see how the Nifty is doing. Uh, uh, hand on heart, uh, what's your gut feeling now going forward? Is the Nifty breaking that uh, low 5410? Is it going below that? I mean, what's the worst case scenario for this market? Looking at the charts. See. Uh not because nifty may break that 5400 number on monday or tuesday but even otherwise even if you know the severest rally potential that i said the highest potential for a rally is no more than 5900 suppose even if that played out the call still remains that going forward into the year we'll see levels below 5000 and not just in india but this is a phenomenon where you know the dollar index simply has been in a 20 year downtrend within which the current year is a complex rally playing out in the dollar index which is getting corroborated by a fact that my view remains intact for the last 6 months it's getting postponed and delayed markets will take time that the british pound and the euro will also collapse this year the same way gold, gold collapsed so the global cycle of rotations within which because the dollar is going to be very strong almost all safe things are going to be collapsing and on that view i remain intact that nifty will be going down to less than 5000 wherever but i'm not going to mix that with an idea that if it immediately breaks 5400 i'll start calling for 4500 for a simple reason let's forget charts let's forget everything else in a day like this today whenever very large movements happen extraordinary movements on either side the popular and the consensus opinion has been that just sell and get out whoever stop loss would have had to be hit has been hit the popular thing today was selling let's ask a question who was buying that name will never come out so it's a gust gutsy or the courageous or the one with the larger tolerance for pain and a rebound can always you know just go out and clear up this consensus today in 2 hours on monday so i'm not going to be coming to the screen on monday with a mindset to just go and join the melee and keep selling i'll sit and wait and watch and see who are these contrarian buyers and why are they buying Fair enough. Uh, well argued. Thanks, uh, Sushil, and um, our other guests, Sambrish, as well as S9, for joining us. I think we've had enough bearishness for the weekend. We'll let all of you go and enjoy your weekend. But um, let's switch gears to the futures and options space.